said, all right, if I record this conversation. So just don't say anything that you think is too specific or right. But I want people I to. Have their permission to use. <coughs> right. But I want people to understand that that this kind of thing goes on a lot. a lot but most people just run from it you know and, yeah, and, and chalk it up to whatever <coughs> and that it gets out of control right <clears throat> all right so let's 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 back up here you, all right you, you, you want me you, to start at the beginning yeah let's well not Wait, the beginning but not the beginning again. beginning but we're talking about a place that we're calling uh, Wind huh? Windwalker. Windwalker Ranch is what we're calling it. What Dan's well, named it. Windwalker Community because it's actually in a community, and people need to know this doesn't happen out just in isolated places. It happens in every community. Right. And so at Windwalker here uh, last week, uh, at the end of last week, or beginning of the beginning of this week, they called up with an anomaly. There is a mother and her daughter who share a room, and they usually have an aging little dog in there with them. And this dog didn't growl much inside or bark. It's very docile inside the house, but it woke them up two nights in a row growling at the mother. They thought. And it makes sense. But they call me with this. Plus, they had this rhythmic knocking. In other words, bam, 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 bam. Always at the front of the house. So I went over yesterday, and I, I pretty much knew what I was looking at. But I have to prove it. In other words, the rhythm of knocking at the front of the house, but it's to draw the adults toward the front of the house, responding to the knocking, leaving the little ones unprotected. Right. So when I got there yesterday, uh, and we visited and all that, then I went into the room by myself. Well, I first went in, checked to make sure, had, uh, with their permission, went into the bedroom. Came back out and let them know I was going to be in there for a bit. When I gone in the first time, the closet door, which is right next to, to the mother's bed, the door's closed. I go back in, the door's slightly ajar and the lights on. In the closet? Oh yeah, but I knew when I stepped in the room what it was. So when I went in, I sat down on the mother's bed, opened the closet door, and let it know I'm there and that I found it. It was going to call you. Another revenue. Yes, they found you. Run. But, yeah, uh, I don't. I don't run from them. As soon as I made contact with it, it moved outside. To the outside the house. So I call the one who can see faces, and she described. A horrific uh, animal look, uh, half animal, half male, with uh, tall pointed ears, things that, that were down below in the chin. Then I brought the mother into the room. And she had trouble because she gets headaches when she gets around the evil, and, and she was suffering before she got in her own bed. see if the, the circumstance, because I know these things do not travel singly. It is extremely rare for you to have something like this uh, manifest on a single basis. They usually bring friends. Yep. And so it's I just, the they, they operate similar, I think they operate similar to a pack of wolves. Yes. I sent the one who sent, uh, exactly, uh, I sent the one that sees faces out and asked that there is a uh, pre female 
Betty starting into to puberty, had her called into the room. Now, at that point, it had gone all the way out into the backyard. I, I could sense it back there. But I, I needed it to run away, not just run back or try to get away, uh, get away from me. So when the, the little female came in the room, it came forward. It came <coughs> forward. And I had her sit next to me because I'm drawing a line in the sand. And when it did, that's when it ran. We checked the, uh, there's a pool there. A so it, pool it, it, it figured out that you, water. it figured out that you knew what it was up to and what it was doing and stuff. What was fixing to happen. And that's what I wanted. I wanted it to worry about being bound and cast and it needed to escape because I knew there was a portal there. And it goes to the pool and there's just a very slight breeze. There's not a wind of any kind, but the pool is rippling. Okay, I went mm -hmm. toward the front of the house. Well, that would indicate for me, of course, in case anybody, because we are recording this for Beyond the Veil, or an episode of Beyond the Veil, um, what that would indicate is if the pool water is moving and there's no breeze, it means there's a frequency in the, in the air that is protobating, meaning pulsing, that will cause the water to move just like the wind will make the water move. But, you know, there's more, you can use frequency to move water. You can look it up on, even on YouTube where the, uh, people take apply a frequency to a water that's falling or that's flowing. You can even make water flow uphill. There are places in the, in, in the United States where the water actually flows uphill, or even a car will roll uphill because of the, the frequency is, uh, the protobation of the frequency is, is so intense that it will force supernatural things to, to manifest and happen just like the pool water moving continuously without being blown by what normally we would consider is required to move the pool water. So, right. anyway. Frequency is an energy and energy can affect it. <coughs> yeah. Water, water is most susceptible to frequency. Right. Which that oh. again is our bodies are water, but go ahead. get what was hiding around so that, that uh, why, if you close that portal it wouldn't be reopened by something coming from what's there or what's there reopening it again after you closed it and so all right we're, we're we're herding sheep or we're herding cattle you see just to give some reference that people can have seen some of this, that, that way they can understand it. It's been shown to us in, on literally on television. Uh, it was called the, um, what was the name of that movie you called out uh, a week ago? Uh, not Gateway. The Sale? Huh? The Sale? No, not The Sale. The one where they were going through the portal and it, you know, it was a, a toroidal fluid looking like portal when they would open it. And they were oh, like the time tunnel. Huh? The time tunnel. Well, that's another good example, but what I'm referring to is they were like military people and they were traveling through and they'd, they would end up in a place that looked like looked oh, like Giza. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um not gateway. Kurt Russell in it. Yeah, Kurt Russell was in it. Um, but they they showed us that kind of technology or that kind of uh, uh, what we're talking about they showed it in they've showed it in a lot of movies but in that one it was pretty obvious and they were showing a, a lot about it even in, even calling it the iris when they opened it and closed it close the iris is what they would say meaning close the, the portal close the close the close it down you know so nothing can come through they would they end up having to to, in the movie, they blocked it off so nothing could could come through because they 
didn't want anything to be able to come back through by, from its own choice because the portal works two ways. <coughs> Coming and going, just like they talked about CERN, when they were talking about CERN, uh, what was his name, uh, Rudy, uh, I can't remember his name, he was the, the guy that uh, was involved in the creation of those, those computers that work on a multi-dimensional level that was the name of them. I'm forgetting all my names oh, this morning. I'm trying to remember his name. Yeah, Rudy or something other. Yeah, it wasn't Rudy. I don't no, it might not have been Rudy. It was something like, kind of like that. But anyways, they talk about CERN, you know, that something might come through or they might send something through. They're talking about... The biggest factor was to either come in and meet us or greet us. Right, yeah. And... They've hinted about this stuff in a lot of ways because it exists, and that's what Dan's dealing with where he's at. So, anyways, just kind of... I have discovered, uh, <clears throat> Brother Daniel, that there are three levels of portals. One is just from one place to another here on the surface of the Earth. One uh -huh. travels from inner Earth to the surface of the Earth. And one crosses dimensions. Well, so you have to that sounds about right. I, I don't, I haven't come to the understanding of, of how many there are and what types, but but that definitely sounds like three that would exist, absolutely. And so, then and then there's one that come out of heaven as well. That's a dimension. That's crossing right. dimensions. It all depends on size. Yeah. As far as its impact goes, most of what I deal with is either inner earth to surface or surface to surface. Uh, I think that, that when I get to, to Oak Ridge, I will fi finally take on the, the first of the major portals, which are from the <coughs> mid But anyway, back to the story. Mm -hmm. Like I said, these things don't travel alone. Right. And, and so while they were, were, I had just come away from witnessing that pool and had them film the pool and went toward the, the front of the house and I sensed the second one under the house. And I started to uh, get it to, to go toward that by starting the binding, you know. Mighty name of uh, you, your father, the mighty name of Yeshua. Well, it started to stir toward the back door. When it did, the lady who never sees faces saw it. It was seven to eight feet tall, had the head of a goat and blood red eye. Mm. <clears throat> then I found the third one in the laundry room. Okay. Now we got to clean the house, spiritually clean the house, set parameters so this doesn't happen. I don't know what caused the uh, breach because they clean that house fairly regularly, but when I asked them yesterday, it had been a lot. It's something people, when things are going good, tend to forget. Yep. We're making it at least once a week practice. Especially with everything that's been going on there. And you have people come and visit, you have different situations um, where you're constantly, without realizing it, opening doors and they're going to be quiet because they know what happened last time. So then until they get a foothold, that's what they do. So I had them, I would come on home because it was getting late. And since my episode, my eyes get real weak real quick. And I have trouble at night. I've never had trouble driving at night, but, you know, 40, 50 miles away. So I come on home while they clean the house. I will be going back tomorrow uh, to drive it out of the yard and the buildings. And then Tuesday, I'll close that portal. Sorry, I was just repositioning. The wind's blowing out here and it's kind of cold. 
So let's uh, let's help people understand what these entities we're talking about, what we understand about them, and what they, um, why maybe even theorize as to why they have this of these abilities and where they come from. What would you say about that? And then I'll give my opinion. Basically, <coughs> from my knowledge, the spirits that I'm dealing with are disembodied uh, Nephilim spirits. That's what I would say exactly. So keep going. And uh, what you have is <coughs> based on evil. Um, and it has nowhere to go. That's why it's always seeking human bodies. It was once alive and had power and enjoyed all the fleshly pleasure. It doesn't have that and it hates. Like a hate you've never felt. It hates humans. All oh, humans. Because we have that given to us. That's why when it gets a chance to go at humans, it causes the humans. We, we think it's the humans doing it. But the Bible says we wrestle not with flesh and blood, which means it's not the It's the uh, influence and possession of these things. And they love innocence. They love to pollute innocence which it has a lot to do with why they were interested in the 10 year old yes it's a female females are the multiplier of the sea mm -hmm. god's promise to go forth and multiply what so were... they have to bring iniquity in any way they can to that i mean i don't want to get too graphic into the discussion but no, i can't i can't I can't help but think what they were waiting on while they were there, like they were waiting around, you know, being there and around her. And she's at that age where she, very soon she will become fertile. Right. And so why not right before this happens? <clears throat> right. So that when that is that capability comes forth, they're in charge of it. The iniquity is dumped on it. And again, the Bible says judgment comes to the church first. Their whole thing is we can't judge. How is God going to judge the, the Nephilim and the fallen if we are every bit as bad as they are? Every bit as iniquitous as they are. You see, when you have a a young female at that age when she when she first begins to have her her ability to produce eggs you're talking about the opening of a gateway from heaven onto earth where spirits where the, the spirits of humans will be manifested by a spark into the womb once there's fertilization, of course, but but just the fact that she is a a woman is a literal portal themselves. That's my opinion. Because well, yeah, they are the multiplier of the seed, of course. <coughs> yeah. This is yeah. a burden that bless their hearts. They have to bear is that once they become fertile. And, that's, and they are there to multiply God's promises to the earth. And that's and why that's the whole point of it all. And that's why the the uterus is called a uterus. Right. A uterus. It's a torus. It's a gateway. It's a, something that opens and closes. You know, and something comes through. Which if in, you can imagine Daniel having access to the, the fullness of one of God's promises. Because that particular part of the female anatomy allows, look at, look at what all who have sought it. Angels, the fallen, the ten, were so overtaken by the possibility of being able to not only behold it and take part of it, but to control the destiny of one of God's major promises to us. Yep. 
the act of creation. <laughs> this is a battle that goes all the way back into the Garden of Eden. The Garden of uh -huh. Eden, the depiction and description of the Garden of Eden and the trees and the, uh, the tree that was in the midst of the garden and the battle that took place there is uh, basically the same kind of battle between the dark and the light that's going on even in your situation which you're, where you're talking about. It never changed. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So it worked then and it continues to work to this very day. And who did the serpent go after in the garden? Did it go after the Adam? The fire of Adam C. Exactly. Yep. So that everything that came forth from her <coughs> had iniquity in it. Yep. What we call the flesh. It was the flesh that gave you the authority through God upon this earth, the dominion. <laughs> so they were able, uh, the Nakash, the feathered serpent, was able to bring iniquity to the multiplier of the deep. So, being aware of that, I knew what the door was. I knew it was no longer uh, aimed at mom. It was aimed at the closet before, uh, behind. I had a, I had a feeling. You remember I mentioned the, the, the two children, a number of times asking questions about them. I had a feeling it had to be somehow tied to them children, but I didn't realize. One of them was female. I thought they were both boys. Yeah. Right. And so that makes a whole lot of sense to me at this point. What they're doing there, why they're there, why they're there waiting. But what you have to understand the wilds of the enemy. Don't take your eyes off the other one. Children are like open channels on a television because of their innocence and inexperience, these things can come in, and if they're focused in one direction, they just sit all of a sudden forget the other one. And you start looking for certain behaviors. How do you judge them? You judge them by their fruit. You judge uh, the all spirits by their fruit. Right. So you have two there. And then you had a, a misdirection, the knocking. A loud, rhythmic knocking. Yep. So we're talking about something that people need to understand on, on how the dark side, the evil side, sets up to attack a family. Then all of a sudden they'll start to influence the adults. And arguments will break out. These kinds of things go to happening. You've got an infestation. And they said, well, we just, you know, couples argue. Friends argue. Do they now? Why? They shouldn't. If you're friends, you, you should, ought to be able to discuss anything. You should be able and to then, disagree and discuss Right. All matters on both sides, and still disagree, even if you can't come to an agreement. Right. And but wait, and, thing and wait. To have to. And the biggest indicator is all of a sudden, to your best friend or to your your mate or whomever, you'll start using uh, word curses on them that you would never do if this was your 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 lifetime mate or your best friend or whomever. <laughs> you call them names that you yep. would never call them. You say things like, damn you. Yes. Or well, you just go, to, go to H-E-L-L. -L. Right. You, and things a lot even worse than that. You them names. You yep. know, like M-F. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you're, you're cursing them and, and trying to not only curse them, but prophetically speak over them. Yep. And hurt them using your words, and which you can and people do hurt people with their words, especially if if someone is... Words have power. Absolutely. 
Because we speak them because the Lord spoke them. They call it cursing. Why do they call it cursing? They call it cursing because you're cursing someone. You're trying to, you know, you're trying to hurt them like a witch using a curse on someone. The people don't understand it, but I'm, I'm glad we're talking about that. This is where this, this all comes in. This is why, you know. Uh, so then, the opposite of that is is the work like what you do. And that is, is using your words, the the words of God and the, the His words, in order to execute dominion over them, because of how powerful the word is. If you take a look at it, the Bible says that everything that was created, <coughs> created and that it was all given to Him, not to us, to Him, right? Then the Bible also says we are co-heirs with him, meaning all the authority he has through us, through his word, we have. These things were not here. They were cast down to here. They're not a part of here. They were cast down here and they're, they have to remain here. Their spirits... They, they, they can't. No they can't escape. They can't be redeemed. Right. There is no salvation for them. They are an abomination. They have nowhere to go. So what they have to stop is the final judgment. In the, if they can't take the, the if, if uh, the enemy cannot uh, accomplish his task by placing his throne above the Father's, the second best is to take away. How do I get this plan across? The plan is simple. If they can stop final judgment, that makes God a liar, and that gives the enemy the ability to put his throne above the fathers. And the Which reason is what he wants, total control of all the heavens, heaven itself, and the earth. And the way that they've done this kind of attempt over and over throughout history and the turns of time over this world is that they've done it through manipulating the master's code, the, the yes. father's code, the, yes. DNA, the DNA within the flesh, which is how these abominations were created, um, was through the manipulation of the code the changing, the altering of the code, which then, of course, ultimately damned them. And then you look around in, in, in our public right now, and what are they doing? Look at the women and the men walking around thinking they're the opposite sex. 